All right, let's get to the All-Star game because you were there, obviously. You're on the field covering it for Fox. Give me your takeaways. What stood out to you? What did you hear when you were there? Like any cool occurrences being on the field for that whole time? Yes, and to me what stands out most about the All-Star game in this era now when it doesn't count anymore is just how much fun the players have participating and being there. And you really get a feel for it from my vantage point. That's the one game of the year where I'm in the dugout. I'm right at the end. Usually I'm in a camera pit, which is adjoining the dugout. I'm not in the dugout. The All-Star game, nobody really minds. It's not a big deal. But you get a sense of just how excited the players are to be there. And I'll give you one example. Orlando Arce at one point, I believe he grounded out, pretty routine out. And he's running down the first baseline in front of the American League dugout. And all the Latin guys on the bench in the American League dugout are just yelling at him and giving him grief. I mean, I didn't know what they were saying. It was Spanish. And he's yelling back. And it's just that kind of fun thing that you see that you don't see in any other competition during the season. And the fact that we mic all the players at Fox and we get such interesting exchanges and conversations out of that, that's another thing that always stands out to me, or at least has the last couple of years when we've done it. And also this game was actually a pretty good game, which isn't always the case, of course. And Diaz as the hero was really cool. 32-year-old, first-time All-Star for the Rockies. Not a lot of people knew who he was and what a moment he had. That's the one answer, too, when people say, well, why do we need a representative from every team? Well, it was kind of a cool moment. For Rockies fans, Ken, this is the moment of the year. Safe to say? Apex. Probably, yeah. And actually, even when Brent Rooker came up, this was very interesting. And there was a contingent of A's fans there, and they were screaming and chanting, sell the team. And that might be their moment. Outside of the reverse boycott, that might be their moment of the year. So that was pretty cool. Oh, and by the way, to the A's fans who tweeted at me saying, you guys did the Otani interview when we were doing that chant. You did it on purpose so people (laughs) wouldn't pay attention. (laughs) <laughs> Let me tell you something, okay? We interview Otani when Otani wants to be interviewed, not when any group of fans is starting a chat. Oh, so I just wanted to clear that up a little bit. So they, so they know, so that, so that they, so A's fans know Otani doesn't want to go to Oakland. He planned that interview for when you guys started. He, the well, no, actually, the accusation, the accusation on social media was that Fox did this. Fox trying to cover up what was going on, and here's Ken, and he kept asking questions. Guys, I I'll love believe conspiracy it. theories, but <laughs> no, this was not that. I believe it. Great. It was Fox. But yeah, Otani, he doesn't want to go to Oakland. He wants to go to Vegas, I heard. That's what he, I mean, that's what he, that's what he told me, you know, so. Uh, Fox Ken, got the I, scoop. I, I, yeah, I got the scoop. I got the, I'm, I'm in, in tight with, with Otani. Um, <laughs> sure. I want to talk a little bit about the Home Run Derby. Uh, I know that, man, the Home Run Derby used to be one of my favorite events to watch um, back in the King Griffey Jr., Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire um, days. Now, I'm not the biggest fan. I I like the timing. I like the time, like the three-minute time. Now, it just seems like a rushed BP. And we're not getting to see guys really lean on balls and try to hit balls out of the stadium. It's tough to follow. It goes too fast. Guys are exhausted. Um, do you think? Do you think we we may end up changing? Are we are we sticking with this routine? Like, I just feel like there's a better way to to, to put on a better show for fans. First off, Brock, I'll be honest. I am not as involved with the Home Run Derby as a lot of people simply because it's ESPN's event, not Fox's, and I don't have to pay it much attention. I also don't cover it for our our website. Jason Stark is one of the great Home Run Derby experts, the leading Home Run Derby expert, I would say, and he does a brilliant job. So that said, I am with you. I have always thought, and the rules have changed over the years. They've been adjusted. It's always quite confusing, and it's tough to say what's going on for some people. Now, that said, fans, younger fans especially, they love it. And they love it. It's actually, for a lot of fans, a better event than the game itself this year. I don't know that it was because the game was pretty good, but in many years, that's the case. So I would say that there are always adjustments that can be made for a competition like that, and maybe they should consider some. But it is an overwhelmingly popular thing. 
And it is a lot of fun. Even with all the concerns that you just expressed, when Julio hit the 41 in that one round the other day, I mean, that was crazy. And Alonzo and what he's done in the past, it's, it's a fun event. It's just something that maybe can be tweaked a little bit. Do you think, based on MLB's track record, or not think, have you heard, since the All-Star game is still the highest-rated All-Star event of all four major All-Star games, that they're going to want to tweak anything with the All-Star game, or is it just going to be a standard MLB, well, hey, if it's not broke, don't fix it, wait till something else, or do you hear some things coming down the pipeline that could be changed, like last year where they started miking guys up? Well, that kind of thing is different than the format of the game, right? That was an innovation. Fox drove it. Fox has wanted to do this kind of thing for a long time, and we got a collective bargaining agreement, and things were more peaceful with the union, and they got everyone to agree that it was a good thing. And everyone does agree it's a good thing. So those kinds of things, Eric, are kind of separate from the actual game itself and the format of the game. I don't know that it will change anytime soon, but keep in mind, at some point, once the Oakland and Tampa Bay situations resolve with regard to their ballparks, we're going to go to 32 teams. There is likely going to be radical realignment. And at that point, the leagues as we know them might not exist. That would be the point, in my opinion, when you change the format of the All-Star game. And Joel Sherman of the New York Post, who has been a guest on this show, of course, he had an interesting idea the other day, basically saying the way to get guys like Ellie De La Cruz in the game is to have an over-26 group of players as one team, under 26 as the other. That's one thing that would be cool. A lot of people have talked over the years about world all-stars versus American all-stars. I think that would be a lot of fun. Wouldn't take away from the WBC. Now, another thing you could do, and this has been discussed too at times, play the semifinals and the finals of the WBC all-star week and change everything around entirely. So there are a lot of ways they can go, but I don't expect any change in the format until we have that big realignment with expansion.